you don't understand the way that dopamine works, there's a good chance that it's going to pull you out into the current of life, meaning the rest of the world is going to control your dopamine schedules. Although you might be surprised to learn that it's not all just about increasing dopamine. And in particular, in some cases, that's the wrong thing to do. We're going to talk about tools related to what's called dopamine scheduling, how the way that you're leading your life and the way that you're conceptualizing your goals can actually predict whether or not you're going to continue to pursue those goals and therefore whether or not you will succeed in achieving those goals, as well as whether or not you will quit. There's a fundamental relationship between dopamine released in your brain and your desire to exert effort. But what is a dopamine schedule and how you can leverage this in order to have heightened levels of motivation, but not get so much dopamine that you're experiencing a crash afterwards. And also so that you can experience heightened pleasure from the various pursuits that you are engaged in in life. The intermittent reinforcement schedule was discovered long ago by scientific researchers. So this is the slot machine that every once in a while gives you a win to keep you playing. This is the, the probability of winning on the craps table or the roulette table or at blackjack just often enough that you're willing to buy tickets, head out there, play again, go downstairs again from your room even though you swore you were done for the night. Intermittent reinforcement is the most powerful form of dopamine reward schedule to keep you doing something. So we can export that. We can use it for good. If there's something that you're pursuing in life, whether or not it's an academic goal or a financial goal or a relationship goal, one of the things that you can do to ensure that you will remain on the path to that goal for a very long time and that you will continue to exceed your previous performance as well as continue to enjoy the dopamine release that occurs when you hit the milestones that you want to achieve is to occasionally remove rewards subjectively. Let's say you set out a goal of making, I'm gonna make this quantitative with respect to finances because it just is an easy description, but this could also be in sport, this could be in school, this could be in music, could be in anything, creative endeavors. But let's say you set out a certain financial goal, or let's say you wanna get a certain number of followers on whatever social media platform. As you reach each one of those goals, you should know now that the amount of dopamine is not going to peak, it's actually gonna diminish and make you crave more. The key to avoiding that crash but to still keep it in healthy levels that will allow you to continue your pursuit is as you are staircasing toward your goal, maybe that's dollars, maybe that's followers, maybe that's grades, maybe that's some other metric, it's medals or trophies. You actually want to blunt the reward response for some of those intermediate goals. Now, I'm not telling you shouldn't celebrate your wins, but I'm telling you not to celebrate all of them. Or as a good friend of mine who uh, recently uh, fortunately for him, uh, had a great financial success. He asked me and somebody else, a, a good friend of mine who's very tuned into dopamine reward schedules, understands how they work at a really deep level. And he said, I don't know what to do next. And we said, oh, well, that's simple. You should just give most of it away. And this wasn't a ploy to receive any of the money ourselves. This was really about reducing the impact of that reward. Now, hopefully giving him money away if you already have enough of it would be something that was rewarding in and of itself. But if you're a student who's pursuing goals in university or you're an athlete who's pursuing goals, it actually makes sense from a rational perspective, once you understand these mechanisms, to hit a new high point of performance or to get that A plus or for you if it's an A minus, et cetera, and to tell yourself, okay, that was good, but to actually actively blunt the reward, to not go and celebrate too intensely. Because in doing that, you keep your dopamine system in check and you ensure that you're gonna stay on the path of continued pursuit, not just for that thing, but for all things. Big increases in dopamine lead to big crashes in dopamine and big increases in dopamine up the ante. They increase the extent to which you are willing to invest time and energy in order to achieve goals and rewards that may be out of your reach. You never really know if you're going to succeed. So to make this crystal clear, celebrate your wins, but don't celebrate every win. That's one way that you can ensure that you're going to continue down the path of progress. And I think most of the learning tools that are in schools are about reward, hopefully for, for genuine performance. They are about encouraging us. We do have to believe that we can perform well. One of the hallmarks of growth mindset is the internalization that 
we're not getting it right yet. The word yet is very important. And also the sense that we reward our good our good behavior, our, our good performance, but not every time. One way to do this is to actually take the reward and reinforcement out of your own hands and your own mind, and you tell somebody that they are in control of whether or not you're allowed to feel good about your wins. Now, this is, I realize, is very unnatural for most people, but if you're somebody who's simply going to be in pursuit and you're going to really register your wins and you think that that's going to actually make you a better performer, it will in the short term, but not in the long term. So you can lift the uh, what Las Vegas and Atlantic City and other gambling uh, mechanisms and places have known for a long time. They lifted it from the scientists. You can now take it back and you can start to leverage that and you just make it intermittent. You reward yourself not on a predictable schedule. So not every other time or every third time or every 10th time, but sometimes it's three in a row, then not at all for 10 days. So reward is important. Self-reward is critically important, but make sure that you're not doing it on such a predictable schedule that you burn out these dopamine circuits. I do believe it served me very well in my scientific career and other aspects of life. My graduate advisor was an amazing scientist. Unfortunately, she passed away, but amazing scientist and amazing human being with a very dry and um, somewhat cruel sense of humor. Uh, her name was Barbara Chapman, and we published a paper in the journal Science. And uh, Science, Nature, and Cell are considered the big three, the most competitive journals to publish in. And I had a first author paper in Science. It was um, really exciting to me. As a graduate student, I was very excited about the discovery. I was excited that it was in science. I was just, you know, thrilled. And I remember when the paper finally got accepted because it involved a ton of revisions and a lot of very hard work. And she came in and she said, you know, the paper got accepted. And I was super excited. And she just kind of sat there and nodded. And I said, are we going to celebrate? Are we going to have a party? Or what, like, what are we going to do? And I'll never forget her answer. She said, mm, we should skip this one. And I thought she was joking. And I said, what do you mean, skip this one? We're going to publish the paper. She said, well, yeah, we're going to publish the paper. But she said, you know, maybe when you get like four more, maybe three, maybe two. And I thought she was messing with me. And she wasn't messing with me. And she was right. We never had a party. We never had a celebration for that paper. I think she was really trying to instill two ideas in me. One is that the work itself was what was supposed to be most rewarding, the practice of experimentation, of writing the paper, the experience of achieving something they worked very hard at. And that did indeed feel amazing. I actually can still feel it in my body now, the excitement. So there's still a dopamine uh, release or that arc is, is going very long. This would be uh, almost 20 years ago now that this happened. So that's remarkable. The other one is that she's right. We never went out and celebrated and we did celebrate other wins, other papers in the future and things of that sort. But she was either consciously or, or subconsciously putting me on an intermittent reward schedule. And to this day, when something really good happens, I actually hesitate as to whether or not I want to internalize that and celebrate, whether or not I want to tell anybody, which is its own form of celebration, because then you're getting positive feedback. And so I am very cautious with how I deploy dopamine release in response to wins. It's certainly not the only way that I've navigated my career. Um, there are a number of other principles I incorporate, but intermittent reward for wins, for achievements, is a very powerful way to ensure that you will stay on the path of pursuit.